Welcome to My Long Island TV. From Manhasset to Montauk, we've traveled our communities to bring you the following events. I'm your host, Waldo Cabrera. My Long Island TV starts now. After all the ice bucket challenges and after all the 5K fundraiser runs, this is the road that ALS advocates hope would lead to a cure. We started out in Riverhead and we will be ending crossing over the East River while we travel over the Brooklyn Bridge. <laughs> so River to River is the name of the 19th annual Ride for Life. Chris Pendergrast has been beating the odds. Most people survive with ALS an average of two to three years, but Chris is still making a difference 23 years after his initial diagnosis. Today, Ride for Life stops at Cold Spring Harbor Laboratory, home to eight Nobel laureates, including Dr. James Watson, the co-discoverer of DNA's double helix. The importance of being here today at Cold Spring Harbor Lab is to hopefully bring some inspiration to the important minds of the researchers that will ultimately unlock the door for a cure for this disease. Speaking through his communicator, Chris addresses the room. Now, I do consider myself a very lucky man. ALS has made my life richer, bringing experiences I would never have dreamed. It led me back to the path of a deeper faith. Certainly, it has made me a better man. I am going to ride until we find a cure, or I will die trying. I will not give up. I will not quit. That determination has earned Chris the admiration of thousands of supporters. Donations on the road average $500 a day, and the Ride for Life makes special stops at schools along the route. We will collect from schools alone this year over $70,000. That's not big corporations. Those are little children raising money, pennies by pennies, dollar by dollar, all adding up. These are all researchers, students and postdocs and, and staff scientists there who are actually doing the research itself to try and figure this thing out. What things have been figured out so far? We're uh, interested in the possibility that endogenous retroviruses, these viral-like elements that exist within our genomes, uh, are actually uh, causing this disease. They're actually becoming misregulated normally. They're silenced, they're not active, they're just sort of, you know, sleeping there in our genomes. And we're really looking into the possibility that these are being woken up again. For that, Chris presented a $300,000 check to Cold Spring Harbor Laboratory. For the most part, we're using the money to actually uh, sequence the genomes of ALS patients to try and see if we're right about this idea. Your brains and your dedication hopefully will unlock some mystery. While some researchers got a pep talk, for Dr. Lisa Krug, this is personal. Her mother passed away from ALS in 2009. I think that was the hardest part for her. Just feeling like there wasn't anything she could do. I honestly never went into biological sciences thinking that I would work on something that would help other people with her disease. And we all try to fight, we all try to go on, but always in the back of everybody's mind you know what the inevitable end is going to be. So, so we really need your help. Definitely the pressure is on. It's also an amazing thing um, to be able to work on this disease and to see how much uh, fight there is uh, in the patients themselves who are advocating for the research. The Ride for Life team energized the researchers and the researchers gave the ALS advocates hope. But not taking any chances, Chris made one final suggestion. Maybe they But maybe they could swing by the lab on your way home. <laughs>